Good afternoon ladies and gents, welcome back to the channel. I'm Steve, this is Steve, and you're watching Bushcraft with Steve Outdoors. So guys and girls, you join us at the Bushcraft Show 2024. This is the third time I've attended this event, but this is your first time, isn't it Steve? Yes it is. Yeah. And Steve has made a very special trip all the way from Mexico to join me on this, uh, what should be an absolutely fantastic weekend of camping events and lots of tomfoolery, would yep. you say? I would say I agree and it's something that I'm looking forward to, so it's very nice. Fantastic, it's been it's absolutely, well it's been a pleasure having you so far. We've had some fun so far before the show, but also on the show we have been sent over some very kind review items from Winnerwell. So we will be reviewing the uh, Winnerwell secondary combustion, it's not titanium, it's stainless, uh, fire pit with the grill so we'll be cooking on that in a little bit and we're also being sent the all powers s300 power station there so we'll be charging all our small appliances camera gear and so forth on this trip we've also got some very special uh, drinks to be enjoying while at the show courtesy of steve thank you very much but right about now um, we are going to set the tent up we are camping on the field um, i brought the rock fortress a couple of tarps dutch army tent whatever suits and we are camped very close to Mr. David Fryers, just at the side of his ear, and Mr. Martin, Gunslinger 1962, just on the right of us. <laughs> so we'll introduce you shortly after. So let's get camp situated. We're all set up. Um, I'll spin you around now and show you what we're camping with this weekend. I am in the Dutch Army tent. And nice to give that another blast. I've put Stee in the uh, Rock Fortress with the bed, being my special guest. Make him as comfortable as possible. This is Martin's setup. All nice and cosy in here, as you can see. And he's uh, been very kind enough to bring my firewood this year as well. So, <laughs> Martin is also in the um, Rock Fortress from One Tigress. And ready to rock another bottle of ale. You ready for yes. it? Let's do it, and then we're going to have a walk in the woods. See what's hey, going on. Like 10 pounders. They've seen some action, then. <laughs> oh, I. Get to break mine out. I'll probably end up slashing them again on this camp. <laughs> Guys, so me and Steve come into the woods and we are currently lost. <sighs> Wasn't very easy to do. Was very easy to do, I'm not gonna lie to you. Steve doesn't know about stinging nettles in the UK, no. <laughs> so I'm just guiding him through them because um, you will know about it if he walks through a bunch of them. I think we're on the right path now. Yeah, this looks more like it. See, I told you I knew where I was going, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> that is absolutely seasoned ash there, so that did not take long to get going. Mm -hmm. That fire pit is not going to stay shiny for long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think everyone's had a go at that. <laughs> <laughs> There's one for your five pin up. That's some nice seasoned ash in there as well, so that should burn for a good while. And now we're going to get some potatoes on. Now, I must say, this fire pit is performing phenomenally. We're just chucking tiny bits of fuel in there now from a, a broken down stump behind us, and that is doing the trick. And the heat of this, Steer's just scalded his hands and removed half the hair from the back of his uh, palm. <laughs> well, yeah, all good. And uh, look at that. This is belting some wacky heat out of this. Very nice. The hotel got your number then, Steve? Yes. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. So we have been for a wander around the event stalls and um, it's very, very busy, I must say. Last year there wasn't trading on the first day, but Quite a few, majority of stores were open today trading, so we've been around a few. I've been collared by a few as well, so we're going to make a few stops tomorrow to do a few chats with a couple of the knife. Uh, well, there's Josh from Firewood. Firewood. Firewood's um, knife making and the gents over at the, what's called them, Falconry, the Falconry lads. So we're going to do that tomorrow, but now we're back at camp enjoying the fire and we're going to taste some of Steve's very, very expensive top shelf. My palate is probably not worthy. Um, Tequila. Tequila Don Julio. <laughs> Don Julio. <laughs> We've been practicing that all day and I still naffed it up. So, yeah. So, and we're on classy Carling pint glasses. <laughs> Let's give this a go. I'll let you measure. 
That looks more than a shot. That's enough. Is this a sipper or yes. would you like some ice? Cheers guys. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> Bloody hell. And you said you can strip walls with that as well. Bit like on the fire. What's up with that? Ooh. That's tequila, is it? <laughs> Now that's a man who knows tequila and he's swelling it around in his mouth and I'm just like... That's like the, the grey goose of tequila, you know, what like vodka is. Is it? Yeah, smell some slowberries in an empty bottle, fill it full of sugar and then pour the gin in and then just tilt it every, every day for a week and then once a day, once a week for a certain length of time. But the hardest bit is leaving it alone because it's just, I want to try it, I want to yeah. try it. And it's just so smooth. It's, just, it's a seasonal drink that everybody does, a lot of people do. Yeah. Class it yourself, can't you? Any cheap bottle of gin, go find a blackthorn bush, set the slows off and just put them in, leave it. You can do Same it as cherry brandy, brandy, isn't it? You can do it with uh, strawberries, raspberries, mm -hmm. any fruit. If you, get, if you get a rubbish bottle of whiskey given, Put a lot of berries in it, put some sugar in, just takes that edge off. It just makes it a lot more powerful. Oh, that is bloody ice cold. What's the on the uh, Guinness? Yeah. Oh! Ten years in Mexico, eh? Ten years. Long time. Has that just made that smoke? Okay. Just, um, John Lane. John Lane. Um, fucking he's a giant. Makes me get a crick in my neck looking at him. <laughs> I said, oh, I don't know. He said, said, do you use it? I said, well, yeah, I do. But... Anyway, he reground it. But it lost part of the... So was it uneven bevels on? Even yeah, so. at the tip it did add uneven bevels. Anyway, he reground it. But he kind of lost part of the LB custom, but you can still see the LB custom because it's only electroplated on. So, ladies and gents, this is day two of the Bushcraft Show, and I'm just about to bump into a couple of friends you may recognise from the last video. How we doing? How are we doing? Yeah, good. Nice you? you too. Hi, are you alright? Oh, <laughs> Brandon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Recognise him. So, day two of the Bushcraft Show. We've already bumped into a couple of friends yeah. walking round. Um, we are just now going to investigate, see what's on, see what's operating and see what's trading. But yeah, really good crowd so far. Really, really busy actually. So I'll spin you around now. We'll take you around. <laughs> He's found himself a nice uh, breakfast roll. <laughs> what have you received in your goodie bag, Steve? Lots of things. Socks. Oh, pair of socks. Oh, crag hopper socks. Bushcraft book, lovely. Bushcraft magazine with Ray Mays on it. Nice. Another Petra Max magazine. Magazine. Wipes. Oh. Cleansing wipes. Water. A bottle of water. And some other pamphlets. And a bar. Oh, and a, a nutrient bar. Plus you get a nice canvas sack there, don't you? So there you go. So that is what you will receive when you go VIP status at the Bushcraft Show. 
I'll just give you a quick look at the Stanford Hall here, absolutely beautiful building. And that is in residence, apparently a ex uh, Royal Marine lives in there. And this is where Stee could be camping, but unfortunately we've come in the wrong way, so we are camping on the upper field. But we're all set up now, so all sorted. Look at this, Floyd, Green Valley Outdoors at the show. <laughs> How we doing? Yeah, good, good. You having fun? Yeah, yeah. Got a hot dog and a chili cheese dog, and it sounded a lot better than it. Oh, why? Check it. <laughs> I, know, I thought it was going to be like. I thought it was going to be chili yeah. on top of the dog. Chili, it's just cheese and chili shoved in a Right, guys, so let me introduce you to Josh from Fired Woods Knife Making. So, tell me a bit about yourself and what you do. Well, so I guess my background in knife making goes back probably to the sort of mid 2000s um, I, when I was a kid I was a bit of a nerd and I was just obsessed with knives you're really into bushcraft all that sort of stuff and I was fortunate enough to get my hands on some kind of decent decent quality knives like sort of woodlaw type knives and things like that yeah. but I'm one of these people with this sort of uh, a bit of a mad autistic brain um, and I'm continuously creating things and wanting to adapt things it's like everything I buy I seem to customize in some way or another um, and it just sort of led to me sort of creating a line of um, different sort of forest knives really. Brilliant, yeah. Well I see some of your examples on the table here, so do you want to show me through yes, yes, a couple totally. of these? So the biggest one I do would be this one, which is the Evo Pro. This is the one I... Um, yeah, yeah, you handle, handle one of those. So that is it's basically my take on a Woodlaw style knife. Absolute beast of a knife. I will bring you closer to look at these after the conversation, guys. But the idea I had was... Um, I find a lot of the handles on, on woodlaws to be quite rounded, yeah. which means when you're gripping a knife, if it's a too rounded a handle, it can you you have you have a tendency to over grip it. Yeah, and your fingers do start touching yeah. on your palm as well. Exactly. So I find a bit more of an oval shaped handle that's a bit deeper. These look a, a lot bigger this way than they do this way. Yeah. Um, and it just it means you get a lot less less fatigue on your hands. It's a lot like the S1 XP I use. It's mm -hmm. a very skinny blade. Yeah. A lot of people don't like it, but I find it comfortable in the end. I find it really really good. And especially when you're doing power cuts and like yeah. driving it through stuff, and it helps with the edge alignment as well. Um, and I do like the grey stone wash on that as well. Yeah, I like the grey stone wash. Yeah. It's a bit of a it's gives a it a bit of, of a primitive look as well. Yeah, totally. yeah, it gives it a bit more of a sort of authentic look. Um, and then the other one I've got here is the Leshy, which is a smaller knife. I think I've seen this one on your. Yeah, the done. Leshy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So this one. I carry that and use it a lot, so that one's in free mill. Leshy's well, a nice, it, 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 essentially it's a bushcraft knife, but it's aimed quite a lot around uh, sort of sloyd, so wood carving. Yeah. Um, you've got that con nice slide continu that. continuous curve and quite a fine point for rotations, which works really well. Um, all the knives I do, I make in ABL steel. Um, I just find it's... I, I used to work with carbon steels, O1 tool steel, things like that, but I just find the ABL holds an edge better. It's a lot tougher. Less chipping. Less chipping. Um, it's very easy to sharpen and it's stainless. So for me, it's, it's this magical combination of steel and. So there's less maintenance all around. Totally. And, the blade. And, and I've worked in things like LMAX as well, and I've worked in um, other super steels. And they're great, they hold an edge for a long time, but the issue is, is resharpening them. Yes. Um, and if you can't resharpen and maintain a knife in the field, it's pretty pointless when you haven't used high spec stones to exactly. You know, you, you know, you're going to need high end diamond stones and yeah. things like that. Um, so yeah, ABL. I I think personally, it's it's that perfect combination of a balanced steel, and it seems to be taking over. I mean, a lot of the other knife knife makers around the show are now switching over to ABL. Yeah, there's well. a lot of all one. Um, traditional knives in the book. I yeah. think this is more prominent now. 100%, yeah, totally. In the knife field, definitely. But yeah, some yeah. excellent wares there. And I think I will be taking one of your fire steels as well. Thank you very much. Um, but yeah, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Nice one, mate. Brilliant. Cheers. This is Josh from Firewood Knives.
Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank have you got any questions about what, what I'm doing? Well, I'll take it you're shaping an axe or an axe yeah, head. Come to right. axe yeah, yeah, just polishing them up and trying to go from something like this, you know, hopefully to something like that. Beautifully smooth. That is astonishing, um, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, Beautiful. into that, there's been hundreds of hours of polishing. I can know. totally believe it. And about the edge on that is razor sharp. Yeah, feel free to. Uh, well, uh, I'll pick it up for you. But um, you can see the kind of the angle of the bevel. It's very, uh, very steep. You it know, is, yeah. And that's to keep it obviously. Um, stop it chipping out. Stop, stop it chipping, yeah, because yeah, um, obviously flint is uh, quite a fragile material, really. Yeah. It's just more. What sort of use would you get out of that? Sorry. What sort of use would you get from that? Um, yeah, lots, like forever, I think, uh, you know, it's um, very repairable, so... So you can reprofile that when it's... Oh, very much so, yeah, and if it if it pulls out of the, uh, of the you know, the handle, you can uh, easily just heat up, because this is pine, uh, pine, pine resin, yeah. um, so you can just heat it up and then slot it back in, you know, add some more sinew or what have you, um, and just re yeah. Yeah, it, yeah, brilliant. I'd say yeah, a lot more, you know, reusable than our modern axes. Yeah. Um, you know, because uh, unless it breaks, obviously, but um, you can just, you know, get back on there and uh, resharpen it and um, replace the handle. Um, yeah, very, very best. Hard. Right, so me and Steve have just stopped for a quick refreshment. Well, I have. Steve's had two steak dinners so far, no drink, so, and he's not even sizzling in the sunlight, me, because. I think it's used to 40 odd degrees bleeding heat. So, strawberry and lemonade, absolutely delicious. And we just found some more stalls just to the right of us over here, so we're going to investigate there. But well, been a great day so far, hasn't it? Yeah. Nice been. weather. Yeah. You enjoyed yourself? I have. It's been nice. There's a lot of shops around here that are very interesting. They have a lot of content in them, and everyone's very nice around here. So mm. It's very friendly. Some, um, there's quite a lot of primitive stalls on this time, on yeah, this year. We've just been over to Will Lord, uh, done a bit of a uh, conversation, one of the lads on there, making a stone axe. We've also spoke to a few knife makers, and um, I've been very, very good with my money so far, actually. Usually it's spent within the first, well, I spent 350 quid within the first 10 minutes being here, but you know, that was an investment purchase, so definitely right. But we're gonna polish this, and then uh, we'll fetch you back later. Right, ladies and gents, so I've been very, very kindly invited to speak to two great chaps here. So this is Paul and Rupert, and these run the Spitfire Avian Pest Control business, which um, eradicates pigeons from busy areas. But they have been very kind as to let us handle the birds, which they have on site here. But we're gonna have a very quick chat, just to find out about the charity and what these guys do. So, take it away. So the charity we support is Changing Step North East, CIC based in Crook in County Durham. Yeah, it was started by a guy, a friend of mine called Dave Tyndall. Uh, unfortunately, he couldn't make it this weekend. Um, but Dave started, he spent seven years homeless on the streets of London, and he just wanted to make a difference. Um, we we consider ourselves a little bit unique with the charity because we're not grant dependent. We do not, we've never put in for a grant, we never will. So you're all self-sufficient? We're self-sufficient. Yeah, self-funding. Yeah, we're hoping soon to start up Veterans Military Crafting, which was used to fund Changing Step North East. So Dave used to teach woodwork, so he used to make like tea light candles and stuff like that. Brilliant, yeah. We've done some wooden benches, remember, we've got a bench down in the Forest of Dean. So all pretty much done. like bushcraft oriented? Yeah, yes. Yeah, sort, sort of, of ways to fund. So, yeah, brilliant. Especially with Dave being an ex-Royal Engineer and he was a carpenter and an armourer. So, yeah. yeah. So like trying to get together a enough money as well to build a veterans village uh, so the veterans could actually live on site and work on site community gardens ah you know, that's so, a brilliant idea yeah. Yeah. like an enclosure yeah. what we're veteran hoping community is i'm hoping to put aviaries up there so we can do therapy work with, with the all guys. these fantastic um yeah but also if the guys turn out good, we can start part of the pest control company up in County Durham and offer them a job out of it. I've got one lad who's floating around somewhere here, Dan, 
right? Yeah, he started with me two years ago. He started was that the young chap here? Yeah. Right, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> he, he now works for me. Brilliant. He was very nervous around the birds. Yeah. Quite quiet. You know, a bit enclosed with himself. But now he's come out, he's really stepped forward now. And I've seen, I've seen cause I trained Rupert up in, uh, with the birds. And I've seen how Rupert's come on. I've seen him pass the knowledge to dogs. Dogs. Yeah, I've seen him pass the knowledge on to uh, Dan. And Dan's now picking it up really well. And he's, he's come on leaps and bounds. So he's training and, yeah, yeah brilliant. I've got so, another guy that lives in Stevenage that I trained. He's now got two of his own Harris Hawks and a little American Kestrel. He works for me. Does some work in North London and over in Clacton on Sea for me. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's but no it's, surprise it's, that these ma the majestic. They're just going to bring anyone out of the shell yeah. eventually, aren't but they? It's not just the veterans for the military services. It's veterans for all of the services. Frontline, all frontline front services. services. So Chanyin Step, we also deal with ambulance service, fire brigade, police force. Yeah. So Which we, is quite we a also unique, do that as well. Thing, really. right, we yeah. rehome people. We've got some really good deals in County Durham set up. We've got a couple of couple of companies that go in, they clear out, do house clearances. They check all the white goods. If they're good, they keep them. If we need to rehome someone, they need the white goods. They actually donate them. They even transport them and fit them in for us, free of charge. But Dave and I are great believers. You get one or two answers, yes or no, when it's doing charity work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we knock on doors. We explain yeah. what we do. Invariably, we get the yes answers, and we've got a lot of people around County Durham that do support us and do help us and do a lot for us. And we've that's still got serving personnel within the military that can get some ex-military service stuff that we can absolutely use fantastic. as well to give out. Is there anything that my very generous viewers could actually do for the charity themselves? If they want to, if they look on uh, changingstepnortheast.org.uk, uh, yeah, that's our website. We have a donation button there for the charity. Yeah, if you've I don't know when you're going to put this out, but if there's any viewers here this weekend, we are collecting for Changing State North East. Brilliant, yeah. We're just asking if people want to hold the birds, they put a donation in. We've got some bits and pieces over there, we've been donated, I've got a few pens in there. Um, the only thing we take money out for is actually the key rings and the hoods, because obviously we had a cut to get them made. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Understandable. So we just take that cost back and then everything else goes in the bucket. But everything else on that table is literally pure donations. Brilliant. Even well, I will try and get a live stream done in a bit just to let people know at the show. Hope but, you get a signal. <laughs> yeah, no, no, full signal there, for, been, yeah, surprisingly. I've been, I've been trying. <laughs> no, full signal. So, I will leave all links in the description if you would be so generous as to donate to these guys because it is a well-worth charity and they're doing great stuff for great people. So, check down there, will you? <laughs> Absolutely. Amazing. And this goes back to medieval times, Falcon. Well before medieval yeah. times, yeah. It goes back, uh, in fact, it was uh, first known about in um, China. China? Yeah. Right. You, you are beautiful, aren't you? Yeah, I'll yeah. a very expensive bird there. Yeah. And I believe he's a racer, racing bird. Great for the racing, the full hour. And he's a regular sperm donator as well, so he has some... Um, very famous offspring, two champions I believe as well. Yeah. And he weighs some as well. My arm's getting quite tired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you Proper dense, isn't it? All day with that, oh, that's amazing. Uh, this is a Jeer Falcon, spelled G Y R, uh, an Icelandic type bird. Right. Um, they're ground nesters, and they are one of the, the biggest of the falcon family. Yeah, this one of the fastest in the straight line. He's a bit grubby on the front because he's been laying on the grass. But normally he's got a very white chest. Absolutely stunning. And these wings, the shape of these wings. Yeah. In fact, it's, it's quite bassy, so you can have a little. Can you? Yeah. Just very slowly. Feel the muscle. Right under his sternum, yeah? Yeah. You are awesome. There you go. Big smile, Steve. <laughs> That's female, yeah. She's actually slightly lighter than him. Really? Yeah. She goes one end, sits in the rafters, he goes the other end, and flushes the pigeons towards her. Yeah. She comes out the rafters and stuff. It's like raptors on Jurassic Park, isn't it? Yeah, the bird of air. I look for this for money shot. There you go. Oh, yeah. Go on there, Steve. <laughs> I'll send you it still for your walk. Yeah, no. <laughs> you, you, you can feed his talent on that. Yeah, you know. Stay there, Roy. 
No, the, you won't do that with any of them. Right. It's related to this one. Right, yeah. Because they're a black animal. It is, is their mother. Because they're a big oh, animal. Go. Uh, uh. Got a bit of a habit with me. Yeah. If he sees me, if I turn my back to him to get a chick out of the pouch, yeah. So, like, normally we use army, army ammo dump pouches. And he thinks I've got meat out. He'll actually come and land on my shoulder behind me or land on my head and look over just to see if I've got meat there. Hello guys, my good friend Tim from Rough Timber has a stall on the Bushcraft Show selling all kinds of quality wares. That's what we've got today. Well, we've still got sort of Levu bits and pieces that I'm selling. Yeah. Tri P. Tree P and the Ridge B and the Truman Stipe for, um, for supporting your canvas tarp. And I've, I've ventured out into Trangier and so I'll do the best burns and the. Oh, fuel. they were quite hard to come by them, uh, yeah. the green Trangier, Trangier bottles. Brilliant. Were a great colour though, aren't yeah. they? Yeah, fantastic. Nice size for your pack as well, 0.3 yeah. litres. Well, I've just designed these um, coal, uh, coal trays so that when you use your zebra billy for baking bread or pizzas and whatnot, just a simple idea. I've actually seen this on your uh, Instagram channel. Seen it, yeah. Brilliant. It's so you can actually in. turn your billy pot into a portable oven, which is a great idea. Fantastic. Thank you. And of course, I've got the trays that are designed and I sell the bread tins, and now I've sort of hooked up with zebra as well. So mm. it's, it's like a, a one, one all-in job sort of thing, you know. So everything's going well for you? Yeah, yeah. Good. good. Yeah, good mate, yeah. Brilliant, yeah. yeah. Well, I will call back and check out your ways. Cool. Again, so <laughs> like, I was wondering about what you were looking for your level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, So, we are out enjoying a pint at the festivities, at the tent, at the bushcraft show. Steve is empty handed. Um, he's down to he's, uh, he's on the Guinness. I'm half cut. And I think it's my round again as well. Guinness. Yeah. Ooh, mine's round. Oh, he's got it. Oh yeah, I didn't get me one yet, so yeah, how's that work? Mine owes me a drink. You've ruined everything, haven't you? So, I am proud to introduce a good man, a good bushcrafter of YouTube who isn't up their own ass. <laughs> this is Craig. From East Anglian Bushcraft. How's it going? You alright? Oh yeah. We've, uh, I've just seen him running across the field so I thought I'd grab him. But Craig's content is real, it isn't forced and it's just so natural and he's a cracking guy as well. Thank you very as much As you can man. see with his uh, Stella Atois. Appreciate you so, brother. Yeah. Very kind Brilliant. words. Lovely old job. Pleasure meeting you. Lovely yeah. to meet you man. Lovely and I'll see him you. again. Future camps at the Bushcraft show. So, Do well. Really. Nice. Cheers. <laughs> guys so this is going to conclude our time over at the bushcraft show this year we've had a really good time um you enjoyed yourself steve yes i did 
So this is his first time over here in the north of the UK. First time at the Bushcraft Show and he has actually bought a few wares that we're going to show you now because we won't be able to show you his buys from the Bushcraft. He'll be uh, back in Mexico by the time I've done the video. So let's have a look at what you bought today, Steve. Yes. I'll start out with the uh, knife purchases. I have bought two knives. One from Fired Woods, which is the uh, Leshy. It's a very a beautiful, very beautiful knife. Fits well in the hand. I do like the. Uh, it looks about four inch blade or so, and then, yeah, it's a nice profile. Yeah, it's really, it's nice, nice stone wash. Would you like to tell them how you've um, obtained this knife? Yes, uh, Josh. He he had it on his belt, and he showed it to us the first night. And um, I really like the leather work as well as the the scales themselves and the handle. It's it's just beautiful. So. Um, for me, it was. I, I don't know, we we just asked him um, if it was available, and he so kindly let me purchase this off of him. And yeah, it is. So we hunted Josh mind. down today to steal <laughs> his personal knife, which has sentimental value to him because the scales actually come from Glastonbury, um, which is where he lives. So yes. he's, yeah, I think he stole the wood from down there, hasn't he? Yeah, exactly. Or he's picked the wood, <laughs> made the knife himself, and. Um, it us appeal very much to Steve. So that is yep. the Leshy from Fired Woods, Josh at Fired Woods. Very nice knife. It is. Very, very, nice. very special indeed. I do like that. I'll put it. Second knife is from Rob Evans. Rob, I've purchased a few of his knives in the past, um, a few knives from him. So the second knife I purchased is the FTP, the Full Tang Puko from Rob Evans. It is a very nice knife. I've purchased a few of his knives in the past, and to me, it's he always makes excellent quality knives so um yeah i always wanted uh, the ftp from him and I, today i had the opportunity to purchase it so this is it it's a very nice um just a quick look very yeah. nice sheath as well some nice leather work well this is rob evans woodman uh, the welshman that's a nice neck dangler there so yeah some very nice purchases there i did purchase also a a, a hat from bushcraft spain I do like the material. I needed was missing one because my luggage was lost in Brussels, so I needed a warmer hat to be able to keep me warm at night. But yes, this is also. <laughs> We've had to basically take purchase. him shopping before he's even got here, yes, so he's exactly. got clothes to wear. But yeah, some exactly. very very nice purchases. And last but le not least, I was able to be gifted this from Steve himself. Let me bring it back a little bit so I can get it full in frame. <laughs> Yes, it is a Fall Raven, so it is a very nice uh, shirt that he had given to me or purchased for me, so very thank you, thank you for that. Hope you enjoy it. Yeah, thank you. Fantastic garments, and I'm sure it won't be a last in your wardrobe. <laughs> yes. Well, yeah, guys, the experience, as always, has been a very positive one. I've bumped into absolutely loads of you fantastic guys who follow the channel, so thank you very much for coming up and shaking my hand. I really do appreciate all you viewers that follow the channel. Uh, and he appreciate the support so again fantastic meeting you at the show and i hope the same can be said for next year as well so mr martin gunslinger 1962 time once again to say goodbye for another year it has been a pleasure as um all the years we've been here now so have you uh, enjoyed your time at the bushcraft show i certainly am you've uh, been out and done a bit of shopping today bought a few bits uh, a few little bits just to uh Waste money on which yeah, you normally waste. do when you come to places <laughs> like this. That is the one. And um, then, uh, and Martin is going to stay for another night. Um, and I hope the weather's. Just to listen to the neighbour snore again. Oh yeah, he's had a snoring neighbour right behind his tent. So, but we will meet again next year, Martin. So we shall. Yeah. It's been a pleasure again. So. Nice to meet Steve. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. Until next year, Martin. Well guys, the journey does not end here for me or Steve. After we have departed the Bushcraft Show, I am going to go and take Steve to see some of our most beautiful and historic locations over in the UK. Namely, York. I want to show Steve the shambles. But until the next one, you stay safe and as always, stay crafty guys. See you again. Bye bye.